everybody. Uh, if you've been watching any of my videos uh, that I've been posting, uh, you've seen me throw 25 pounds maybe of a whole block of clay, which was kind of a fun stunt, but uh, it's um, it's just that a stunt. You, know, you get better results by sectioning things up. So anyway, I took that and uh, took it apart and wedged it and got it down to two about 10 pound sections, and I threw these two sections. And now I'm gonna and uh, I did a video of this one this morning on Facebook. Um, so check that out if you like. And then this one, I just I didn't record that. But now I'm gonna put these two together. So I've got my uh, cake decorating tool here, which is a great scoring tool. And I'm gonna score the rims. I'm gonna apply slip, and then I'm gonna put the two together. The scoring is important. And often, Ceramic artists, students, uh, often refer to it as students because I teach. They don't score deep enough. And think about it this way. My hands are, are material. We're going to put them together. And they slide around like this. And then if I score them, they're like this. But if I don't mash them together, they can still move. But if I score very deeply and I really mash them together, they're locked together. So that's the idea here. Okay, now I'm going to apply slip. We use slip like glue. Add a brush. And this is just uh, the slip or slurry from the process of throwing. I need a bigger brush. Well, this is going to have to do. I think one thing that um, students often struggle with is making things messy. Sometimes you have to make a little bit of a mess and clean that up. I think there's sometimes an expectation that ceramics, you know, when you, you make something, it, uh, you're, you're going from this transformational media to a finished product and that is uh, immediately, and that is not the case. Clay has to be refined. It goes through a variety of different stages from plastic, that's our working, a working stage where it's easy to mold and manipulate to stiffer stages these have gotten a little bit stiffer these two components I had to wait until they did so that I could put them together if I tried to put them together in the beginning the bottom part would collapse when I put the top on so anyway here I am making a mess but we'll clean that up all right Amy's doing a good job of filming thank you for helping me so now she's going to zoom out, and I'm going to take this, and I'm going to flip it upside down, and I'm going to stick it on top of this one. So are we in a good position here? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, this is still stuck attached to the bat. I never wired it off, so it's still hooked down. We'll wire that off in a minute. So now I'm just going to flip it upside down, line it up. I did a really good job of measuring with my calipers. I used... Um, Scary to touch these right now. I used these calipers earlier to measure around it. So when I made the top piece to match the bottom, they fit exactly. Now, to make this kind of final, I don't just want to sit it there. I want to do any fine adjustment I need to do, make sure it fits all the way around. No areas hanging over too much. And then I just want to gently Give it a little pressure, push down. You can see the top is a little bit softer here. See how this flexes? I don't know if you guys can see that. But this component right here is not as dry. 
as it is down here. So uh, it's got a little bit of uh, a little bit of flex to it when I try to kind of push down and give it a twist. And that's always a good idea, push and twist. You have to be careful with a form this big because you don't want to push too hard and have the form collapse. So now that I've got those attached roughly, I'm going to go ahead and take this top off. Or this, it's not a top. It's our bottom. It's our bat. So I'm going to take the bat off. I'm just using a regular wire tool. Hold that underneath. I'm going to brace with my chest here. And just pull that across. <coughs> and now I'll put this back on the wheel. And I'm not, I'm not detached at the bottom either. So I can put this back on the wheel, compress this seam, and then I can throw the rim a little bit. And so that's going to be the next step in the creation of this piece. Thanks. Hey everybody, I'm just putting the last component part onto um, this piece that I've been working on. The last time that you guys saw it, it was uh, two pieces that I was putting together, so obviously things have changed a little bit. Um, I uh, have done quite a bit of work uh, after the attachment. There was uh, compressing the two parts, making sure they were, they were attached well, some trimming while it was on the wheel. Uh, I've added these cast baby arms. All of these uh, these processes that I'm going to talk about would be really interesting, I think, but uh, but they're long, drawn-out processes that aren't really great for video. So we, we jumped and uh, forward quite a bit. Um, I uh, airbrushed the body, painted uh, jaguar spots on it, and I've crafted um, this crow that sits on top. And all of this is part of a um, uh, an event, or this piece is created for an event called The Deconstruction. And I really encourage you to check it out at thedeconstruction.org. Uh, it's a 48 or yeah 48 hour event uh, where uh, essentially uh, you make something from nothing and this year we deconstructed distance so I took information from uh, over 20 different uh, people friends students uh, they gave me ideas about what they thought it was to deconstruct distance and then I created this based on that so um, just to kind of recap again uh, airbrushed body and hand painted cast baby arms that were attached. These baby arms were something that uh, uh, I was given by my, um, my mother-in-law. Uh, she uh, used to make babies, or make uh, baby dolls. And, uh, and she gave me a kiln too, with the, this will get fired in. And uh, as far as the symbolism, we're not gonna get into all that. Uh, we can talk about that later if anybody's interested, but, because um, there's a lot going on here. But uh, these components were, um, were part of the castings from the arms, or the back end of the castings from the arms, but I thought they looked very industrial. And that my idea is that I'm gonna attach on this piece, it will have these components that hang off of it. And um, they're these, like uh, you may have seen things like this before, like the evil eye. You know? Hey everybody, this is John Gressens. Here's my reveal for Deconstruction 2020. I uh, took about 20 pounds of clay and well, there's probably, by the time it's all said and done, there's probably 25 pounds of clay in this. Um, and uh, this is my collaborative piece. I worked with um, 20, I believe I had 20 different uh, people, collaborators that gave me information. I was a teacher and now the idea is that I reverse the flow of information. I'm usually teaching. I asked them to teach me or give me information. And I constructed this based on their ideas. We talked about uh, the uh, idea of deconstructing distance and I got a lot of good information from a lot of good folks themes that we came up with a large vessel that was uh, that was given to me by one of my former students colors warms and neutrals the clay kind of handles the neutral and I have warm colors here um, connections are conduit there will be another element to this where I have uh, wire coming out of these kind of conduit holder looking components and I've constructed these kind of evil eyes the uh, the uh, protector, protecting eyes, that will hang from wires that come out of there. So I'll have those hanging out. A variety of these I've constructed, quite a few of them. And on the back of each one of these, I've got eyes on you. And that goes back to this idea of ancestry <clears throat> and people looking out for us, which one of my other students gave us, or gave me. Um, we also had this idea of hands 
uh, as a motif and spatial tension. Spatial tension, typically we, we try to create that you know, with two hands almost touching, but I couldn't really pull it off with this, but I thought, well, the spatial tension is really between you and the hands. Um, I've got uh, another student uh, mentioned going deeper. You had to go deeper to solve problems, and I thought that this kind of threaded component made it look like it was drilling down, and, uh, and the idea that the hands were emerging from the body, uh, that was something that indicated that we went down into it and we're coming out of. The um, cat uh, feature was from um, a local group uh, called Pop Up Posse, and they have a competition uh, going on. I think I'm gonna try to figure out how to get this in there. Um, it's a weekly thing, and there's a cat theme, and I thought that would be fun to kind of cross and do both of those these competitions at the same time. So we have the jaguar pattern, which is also <coughs> a power symbol. So in Mesoamerican cultures, that's a that's a it's a, a, a animal of reverence. And so it's aggressive, it's our adversary, it, it symbolizes that, and right now our adversary is this distance. And uh, so that's the, the cat motif, or the cat theme. Um, we had vehicles that people brought up, but I haven't been able to solve that one yet. I think later on I might construct a carriage for this to kind of sit on, so that, that's where that may come into play. Crows, excellent communicators, and clan-based. <clears throat> Sometimes people think of crow as a harbinger of, uh, of ill tidings or or, or uh, bad news, but personally, I love crows. I am fascinated with crows. I've started feeding crows and calling to the crows, and so um, I am. Uh, I wanted to include the crow motif, and I just think they're super intelligent and they communicate really, really well. Um, I think that's about got it for all the the, the symbolism, and uh, I appreciate you guys watching and paying attention. And again, John Gressens, that's me, and uh, it was fun to participate this year. Thanks.